welcome everyone again. Welcome to the first webinar of our most recent uh, initiative, Stay In for Speak, Stay In. Uh, my name is Liliane, I am Portuguese, so first of all, I'm sorry if my English is actually not perfect, but I will be the host of this conversation. Uh, for you to know, Stay In for Speak is a series of tech industry and remote working webinars to inform and promote the discussion between a lot of industry professionals. But in this case from home, uh, that's why it's a webinar, since it's absolutely crucial for us to overcome the challenge of COVID-19 to stay inside. So please do stay if you can, okay? Uh, this is kind of our contribution to help these people that are actually practicing social distancing or working from home, which is our case. Um, as guests, I will have with me Larry O'Brien, uh, InfraSpeak Country Manager in the UK, and, like and Carol dos Santos, uh, who is, uh, is a Customer Success Manager that has been working both with UK and Brazilian markets. Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, so basically, I will start um, for telling you, uh, with telling you guys uh, something that you actually don't know, but I am in Portugal, Carol is in the UK and Larry is in Scotland. Uh, so as you can see, we are all used to remote working um, during our, our daily job, but definitely not in this kind of situation of isolation, uh, which is actually not the same. Uh, where we can't uh, and really shouldn't leave our home. So, Larry, how have you been dealing with this situation, actually? Um, well, for me, it's a little bit different than for many people who've first timed this, because I've done this throughout my career. And in part of my role with InfraSpeak, I travel quite a bit anyway. So, although my home is in Scotland, my office is in London with Carol. So I do travel, I do work remotely, etc. The specific situation, it's really unique. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a difficult time for everybody. Everybody will be thinking about social distancing. And by social distancing, we actually mean physical distancing from other people, being physically remote. But actually, it's quite important that socially you're still engaged. But just thinking about what, what other people are doing, and how they're trying to get through this. Part of that, for me, the biggest change I've got is the fact that my children are now at home. And that really makes a big difference because the children, basically, although they see themselves doing some schooling, they view this as a holiday, and they view daddy and mummy at home, therefore it is definitely a holiday, and they want to engage. So the biggest change we've had to do is actually put structure in place for the children, to give them routines, to let them get through this. And that's exactly like I do with my own time. I put structure in place, I put routines in place to actually to help me to work through this. So for me, it's not as big a thing as it will be for many other people. And also as a technology company, we're also quite comfortable with using all this kind of technology. Yeah. Okay. Larry, thank you. Basically, for me and Carol, it's probably a little bit easier because we don't have kids, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. However, uh, I know that Carol, for example, is a person that really likes human contact, and uh, me as well. And until recently, we were working at the office. So, Carol, how this personally uh, had an impact on you? Definitely. Um, the social side is, um, the social and the human side of things is what uh, I miss the most on a daily basis, um, but again, it's just about creating new routines and, you know, getting yourself into new habits. Um, also, the great side of things is that we learn new ways to communicate and we have new channels of communication. So, for example, on the customer success team, uh, we meet daily in a, in a hangout chat every morning where basically we just chat, uh, we have coffee together um, and we kick off our day together. So that does actually bring us quite together and helps everybody start their day in a better mood. Apart from that, you know, so my working zone has now come into my comfort zone. So it is sometimes difficult to, you know, separate yourself from work and not, you know, put an end to it at the end of the day. So, you know, it's all about small things. I'll finish my day after, you know, my meetings and my calls and 
all of the normal daily tasks and I'll put on my gym clothes, do an online gym class. And then that just kind of seals my working day for me. And then I can just go into my relaxation mode. So yeah, that's how I've been coping with it. This little now, thing. Sorry, sorry, Larry. Go ahead. If you have something to add, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think Carol's got the point, and we mentioned it earlier on, it's routines. It's actually breaking your day up into those different elements. I mean, when I Absolutely. started being a remote worker, I used to close all the doors in my house other than the room I used as an office. And then I went out and had a coffee or had a walk. And when I came back, I went straight into my office to start work because I, I, I struggled until I kind of put that routine in. It's like, I'm not somebody that could wander about in their pajamas or their joggies. <laughs> I need to put, I need to get dressed. And yeah, same here. Walk. I do. Yeah. <laughs> and then get dressed, do your makeup, just like if you're leaving the house. I, I spend ages on my makeup, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're looking my, great. Don't worry. <laughs> thank you. My thing now though is I kind of take my dog out or take my dogs out in the morning, come back in, go to work have a break at lunchtime, spend time with the kids, with the dogs, take a break, you know, come back into work, have the structure of the meetings you're going to have, have the structure of what you're going to block your day into sections of, and really just by having those activities, you subconsciously know what you're meant to be doing at any given time. And it really does help. It's having yeah. that. It breaks your day down as well. So, you know, it's not like one long stretch of a whole day just dragging on. And it's healthy, very healthy, you know, to take definitely. frequent breaks, definitely. The criticality there as well is for, for everybody, or for most people, even if you don't have children, but you do have a partner or you're in the house at your parents or whatever, you've got somebody else that you need to interact with to some extent. And having that time to interact with them also puts the boundary around the time you need to get on with your job. Because if you don't give it those kind of boundaries, you're going to struggle with it. That's my personal opinion anyway. Um, I know otherwise my kids would be knocking on the door of my office every five minutes and I'd be like that guy <laughs> the BBC news reporter where his children uh, photobombed his report. You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it just would happen. That's all there is to it. So that yeah. structure not only helps me, but it helps them. Perfect. Um, Larry, as you were telling before, you're actually pretty experienced in managing a team remotely, um, in this case for the UK market. So I know you're pretty comfortable with it but maybe some of our viewers, viewers are probably struggling to understand how yeah. can this work. So what tips and tricks uh, would you share with them to keep their team motivated? I, it's the simple thing. It's, it is going to vary from team to team and the type of job you are. I mean, I was talking to somebody yesterday who's working remote, but his staff, because they're an FM business, are physically on site. You know, so that's a, a very different scenario depending on what you're doing. It's engagement. It really is. It's that five, 10 minute phone call in the morning. It's a checkup later on in the day. It's letting them know that you're available, whether that's normal hours, 24 seven, whatever needs. It's also working on your pre-boot sessions. You know, life goes on. So if you've got weekly report sessions, do them, keep them rolling, but have those ad hoc sessions as well. Cause it just, you know, as needed, Sometimes somebody working at this moment in time just needs 10 minutes to vent. You know, there's no real difficulty in being a shoulder or a pair of listening ears to let them vent. But the other thing we use within our organization is we use kind of hangouts. Um, we use an area where you can go and actually be logged in in the background. And while you're working and doing things, you have the audio off there, but then you can switch into it and chat with your colleagues and have a coffee. We do a social hangout at lunchtime. So everybody has the ability to go in. So I make a habit of every day, making sure I drop into that social hangout if I can, for even if it's just for five, 15 minutes, have a chat with a few of my colleagues in different places. I catch up with Carol virtually every day depend on the workloads and where we are. And just that availability and engagement helps for everybody, I think. Works perfectly, I guess. Uh, but Carol can confirm. Do you confirm, Carol? It works? Absolutely. 
<laughs> Perfect. Uh, Carol, you also have the experience of actually handling the relationship with our Brazilian clients. So you already know um, how exactly does it work with, uh, you know, managing clients remotely. Uh, but has anything changed under this situation? So how are you showing our UK clients that we are still active, that we are still available and that we still have their backs basically? Brilliant. This is my favorite part. Mm -hmm. um, so the difference basically between what we do and other companies is that we don't have implementation teams. So our goal isn't just getting you live on the system and up and running and then that's it. No, we have a you know we have a committed customer success team that I, you know i'm really proud to say and belong to there everybody is amazing and we are there for you during after the implementation we work with you on ongoing and that's the crucial part of of our approach that's what makes us different that's what makes us us um and that also makes everybody understand that we've always had your back InfoSpeak always had your back and will always have your back and you can rest assured with that um, we are proactive in putting in extra effort and intention and attention and giving our guidance positive and enthusiastic words that makes our customers feel more of as partners and not as customers or clients and, and that's a special touch that we give to things around here. Um, we know that our customers can be anxious during these times, you know, keeping their employees safe and, and healthy, you know, we help them with our contingency plans. We put those into practice. You know, I've been introducing new processes on sterilization and cleaning, um, which we also increase the number of times that these get done and get carried out throughout the day. Um, you know, managing tasks and resources and keeping up with all of, you know, equipment and assets and all of these, managing all these things, it can be a lot. Um, and, you know, with InfoSpeak, we can easily help you do that, you know, through our mobile app, through your computer, on your whatever devices at hand for you, we're there to make things easier, definitely. Perfect. So it's basically being there for them, trying to help as much as we can with any resources we have, right? Basically. Absolutely. Okay. Larry, what about you? How are you currently handling the relationship with our clients? Well, again, it's like Carol said, there's, there's a lot of really, really good work being done within InfraSpeak. So not just the involvement that Carol and the customer success team are having with the customers, the engagement with them, supporting them through this process and the things they're doing, like coming up with new processes, helping them deal with things that they've not really had experience of before. But also coming out of that, we've done some other things that we've published out on the network, like the original uh, COVID-19 piece that we put out, doing these webinars, working with people in that way. But also we we're reaching out to a, a wider relationship base, um, the people that we have been talking about who may eventually become customers now it's not about selling as such to them it's about engaging with them and just seeing if we can help we are we're very fortunate that doing what we do we come across a lot of people so you're actually able sometimes if you come across somebody who's got a particular issue or problem to be able to put them in touch with someone else through the network that you know that might be able to offer them advice or tell them how they've done it or engage with them that way. So we're kind of being more of, we're, we're becoming part of their team in that regards, rather than becoming someone trying to provide them with a solution. Um, and that's where the whole approach of we've got your back comes with. So you know the stuff that we've done with the, the technology group in Portugal, so working on the resources and helping people find the right things. There's other people looking at doing similar things in the UK that we're now getting engaged with and talking to them about. So it's all of that wider relationship piece that comes in. And sometimes it's really about the basics, spending 10 minutes on the phone with somebody and having a chat. I mean, because everybody's concerned about what they're doing. All the guys that are still working are concerned about who they're meeting, what they could take back to their family, how their parents are, how their children are, how their friends are. And just being somebody, a voice of reason, chatting to them for 10 minutes, being prepared to listen, mm -hmm. you know, can make a big difference. You know, Larry, that... Cost anything. That's actually connected to my next question. So, Larry, um, 
as what's the general feeling because i know people are worried but uh, would you say that our clients are actually still motivated to deal with the situation or a little bit insecure a little bit anxious what would you say no i i it's interesting i think i can only talk about the fm section here, mm -hmm. section here. and to be honest um it makes you quite proud to be involved with that because people are taking a really really pragmatic view of life they're turning around and going well it needs to be done we've got to do it there's people in worse situations you know it's really nice to see that and there's thought processes going on as well that are beyond now they're thinking about well what are we going to do we wish it's all going to be over in three weeks as certain people say but i don't think any of us reasonably expect that we're all thinking 12 16 however long and the view on life is okay how do we move forward how do we improve we've got to provide critical services to support like the hvac guys supporting the nhs the cleaning team supporting the nhs and other organizations i mean these guys are doing critical work that's really important but they're also looking at then what they can be doing how they can be stepping up and also thinking about even the organizations that are doing mothballing activities at the moment they're thinking about how they're going to bring those buildings back online they're thinking about what services they're going to be offering in the future i mean we all hope that this pandemic is a once in a lifetime thing but people are going to have to think about how they're going to prepare for this sort of thing in the future we're very fortunate that we've got the resilience and the pragmatism that we have within the FM sector. Otherwise, I think we'd be in a lot worse place than we are now. True. Before proceeding, I will just leave a note to our uh, viewers. Okay, so if you want to drop a question, feel free to do it on the chat or on the Q&A section, okay? Because if we still have time, we will uh, get them answered, okay? So if you want to share some thoughts or do some questions, go ahead. And now my next question is actually for Carol, um, related to the, to, the, to the discussion that I was having with Larry. Because you follow our clients very closely, uh, so what I wanted to know is that if you think that now they have more time to connect, if uh, right now it's the time to collect more information on how can we help them, if they are rethinking processes, you know, because right now they can even understand better how our software can help because they have the time to dedicate to it. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is a time where we are rethinking you know processes and coming up with new processes and implementing um, new routines and new tasks that can be carried out not only on buildings but also on the employees we can't only think about the situation we are now like larry mentioned we need to think ahead and look at the preventive side of things as well in the future and companies they do need to ensure they're protecting you know their employees you know that their environments are safe and that the people who they're working with and the services that they provide um are all uh kept up and running and everything is at peak performance as you know it would have been before this has happened you know i think that the bottom line is that we need to work smarter be prepared and according to each of our customers and clients' realities we just need to adapt and adjust to what works best for them and that's you know what customer success team is all about that's what we're there for is to sit down with them and bring new solutions ideas and processes to the table perfect this is new for all of us that's great to hear actually uh because even though it's new for all of us it's great to keep our you know uh, positive attitude in the end yeah we're super proactive you know the team itself everybody's on point always one step ahead so i can ensure that everybody's in good hands perfect uh, so basically, I'm going to proceed for the last question, which is uh, for both of you, but maybe um, we can start with Larry. Okay, so we know that no one knows how the future will be after this or what changes uh, will be, you know, happening after COVID-19 outbreak. Mm -hmm. But what do you think it will change uh, for the facility managers? So. Overall, what kind of measures do you think that uh, these managers could implement in the future to deal with this kind of situation, Larry? Um, well, I don't think it's just going to be COVID-19. I think um, 
I think facility managers are going to have to look at what their plans are for any eventuality, any disruption. Most people have plans in place if the building falls down and how they're actually going to move forward and deal with something like that. But this is different. They're going to have to think more about how people can work from home, how to facilitate that working experience, uh, how to, whether it's appropriate to keep their premises open, how long for, based on what best advice and what guidelines and what plans do they have in place within their computerized maintenance management solution, for example. Uh, looking at that then when they're going to take a building down and take it offline, what's the approach on that? Do they make a decision to mothball a building do, uh, based on the fact that something's happened? Or do you mothball a building if you expect this eventuality to take at least three or six months? You know, and a lot of that is also going to come back to government advice and how you engage with and take that kind of thing. And it's also going to come back to not the individual facility manager, but also the facilities management organizations and the professional bodies and the groups to actually help everybody come up with best practice approaches here. And then solutions like us will implement those best practice approaches and put them into the system to make sure that our customers are able to enact that. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of the stuff we've already done and that we're working with customers on is like cleaning routines. Carol can talk more about that, but how often you should be cleaning, how you should be cleaning, looking at what kind of maintenance you've got in place. If you're an emergency, sorry, not an emergency, but if you're a, a required service, like a, a Tesco store, how do you keep that store open? How do you do that? What is the FM plan for distancing people? How do you make sure your HVAC engineers are still there and still available to you? How do you make sure your chiller cabinets still work? You know, so what are the relationships you've got with your third party service providers as well? And from the point of view of the FM service providers, how do they categorize their customers? Because with a limited amount of resources, a limited number of engineers in the field, they need to prioritize NHS customers over superstores. You know, so you've got to make those kind of decisions and think of in advance and plan how you make those decisions and what those relationships will be. So I think there's going to be a lot of activity and good conversation coming out of this for future planning. Yeah, yeah I agree completely with with Larry just said, you know, just to add on, um, according to, you know, what industry you're in and, and where you're from, it's, you know, the processes, they all come down to um, disinfecting and sterilizing right now. That's the major focus in getting, making sure that those routines are up and running and that they're being followed through um, by employees themselves. So have they, you know, um, have they used hand sanitizer? Have they wiped down doorknobs? Have they wiped down, you know, common surfaces, things like that um that's what it's all about that's the major focus and that's what we bring to our clients as you know putting that into immediate action um at this time when we're going through this you know severe outbreak of COVID-19. I think also to add to that there's going to be a requirement on third-party service providers as well as internal FM companies uh, to start doing more in the way of audits and QHX and what they're doing and how they're doing it. Simple things like, do their staff have PPE kit? You know, there's been a real issue around the availability of PPE kit. Um, it's a tough thing to imagine, but you need to make sure that kind of stuff is going to be available in this sort of emergency. I mean, we all, we all talk about the problem that the NHS is facing with doctors and nurses in kit that you would wonder about. Um, and in fact, kit is probably more appropriate to be worn by somebody serving you in your local Tesco waitress or Asda. Um, but then the Tesco waitress and Asda need to have a supply of PPE kit for their staff. Those are the kind of questions we're going to have to be faced with in the future. Absolutely. Great inputs, guys. Really. Thank you so much for this. Um, I don't know if we have any questions. Apparently, we don't. Andrew, I notice you know Larry, so if you want to, you know, pop a question for him, uh, this is the time. <laughs> Don't ask things like that. You never know the question that I'll get asked now. He said no. <laughs> he said no, we're safe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Thank you to everyone that has been uh, watching this webinar and took the time to participate in it. Thank you so much.
Um, actually, thank you so much, Larry and Carol, for the great discussion we had here and for sharing your experiences. Because since the beginning, we have been working a lot to learn with the knowledge of our 40,000 teams at Infraspeak. We really want to make everyday, everyday operations into a source of good life for everyone. So now we invite you all to share your thoughts and experiences with the rest of our community so we can all learn together. Um, and please, if you have any questions, reach us at our email, our website or our social media and we will definitely give you an answer. And stay tuned, uh, stay tuned on Stay Infraspeak because we are coming back next week. Thank you. Thank you, Liliana. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Thank Stay you. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Bye -bye. Stay safe.